What's up Paper Cup? Welcome to a new day. Today I'm going to show you how to brew coffee at home with a mocha pot and how you can make much better coffee with just a few adjustments. Wow! Now I really love this thing because it's so portable and to be honest I'd rather take this thing around with me when I'm going on camping trips or even longer trips abroad just because all you need to brew coffee is this. The AeroPress is marketed as a portable coffee maker but there are still a bunch of parts that you need to take care of not to mention all the filters that you have to bring around it's the same thing with brewing pour over coffee like with this v60 you still have to bring the filter around this is from my morning coffee earlier today with the mocha pot you don't need a scale and you don't need a kettle of course that does take away from some of the fun of brewing but if all you want is a simple convenient more than good enough cup of coffee then the mocha pot's really all you need. When Pauline and I were in the States earlier this year and we needed a way to brew good coffee at home, uh, this is what we bought. We just bought this at a local department store and we didn't need a kettle or a scale or anything like that. Really interesting how this thing works if you have not explored it before. You have the bottom section right here which is built to contain water and then heat it up. Then you're gonna put coffee in this basket right here. Put the ground coffee in the bottom section where the water is. Screw this on and then put it on a burner where the water will then heat up so much that it evaporates and it will evaporate through the basket full of ground coffee and then end up at the top section of the mocha pot. Now I just told you how it works but here are a few things you can do to optimize taste. First, make sure your beans are good. Great beans are not too fine to hard, not, not too hard to find nowadays. On the screen are three of my favorite suppliers. You want to get a filter roast rather than an espresso roast. And if you have a grinder at home then I recommend you don't have the beans ground beforehand that you grind your beans fresh every morning. If your thing really is the darkest barako out there, then go ahead and stick with that. But if that's just what you feel is the best kind of coffee, let me tell you, for 95% of people out there, it's not. Try out coffee that's roasted a little lighter or in the medium light range and discover for yourself whether you prefer lighter roasted beans, i.e. beans that reflect more of the flavor of the bean itself rather than just the roasty flavor of the bean. Okay, let's start brewing. So you want to fill the basket of your mocha pot up to the brim. If you've got whole beans, now's the time to grind them. And honestly, a really fun part of brewing coffee every day is figuring out what grind size is right for you. A lot of people want to grind as fine as possible or as close to espresso grind as possible. Now, if that makes your coffee taste too bitter, too hollow, then maybe you're grinding too fine. You're over extracting the flavor from your coffee. On the other hand, if your coffee ends up tasting a little sour or maybe even a little watery, then for sure you're grinding too coarse and you have to grind finer in order to extract more flavor from the coffee. Now, I've said that one of the reasons that I love the mocha pot is because it's so portable. One of the reasons I don't love the mocha pot is because the filter basket is not a paper filter. And because all that's filtering the coffee are these tiny holes, you may end up with a little bit of sediment in your mocha pot coffee. Your coffee might taste dirty or dusty or you'll, you'll just feel it on your tongue. Now, here's something that a lot of people don't do that you can do to optimize the flavor of your mocha pot coffee. When you fill the bottom part of your mocha pot with water, use hot water instead of cold water. Fill it until the valve right here. Put in your filter basket and put the coffee in the filter basket. The reason that we want to use hot water is to minimize the time that it takes for the water to start evaporating through the coffee bed. And the reason we want to minimize the time is so that the coffee itself does not spend too much time interacting with the hot metal of the mocha pot. Do not tamp the coffee or push it down or pressurize it in any way in the basket. Use a towel to screw the top half back on because the water's hot. And now you can put it on the burner. The mocha pot doesn't have to be closed while you're brewing it. Actually, you want it to be open so that once the coffee starts brewing, you'll be able to see it and hear it. All right, so another thing you can do that a lot of other people don't do is stop the brewing process when the coffee stops flowing out of the spout smoothly. Pour your coffee into a cup. Okay, so as expected, I have a nice clean cup. Light on the body, nice floral aroma. 
These are more characteristics of the beans themselves. But for sure, the reason that I have coffee that's a little bit more murky and a little less clear is because the filter basket is not a paper filter. It's really just little holes in a metal basket. All in all, that's pretty much what I think you should do if you want to brew better than normal coffee through your mocha pot at home. Have a great day.